Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating these wonderful multi-coloured elements in Illustrator. But before we begin, let me introduce you to my Illustrator courses at Udemy and at Skillshare. You'll find coupons in the description below for every one of my courses at Udemy as well as a coupon for signing up at Skillshare. My deals at Udemy and Skillshare are at least as good as the site's deals and typically mine are even better. Feel free please to share these coupons with family and friends. So let's swing back to Illustrate. I'm going to create a new file for this project. This is going to be screen size at 1920 by 1080 pixels. I'm going to create some elements for my color scheme. So I'm just dragging out a small rectangle here. It's not going to have any stroke at all, but I'm going to give it a color at least for now. I'm going to make some duplicates of this. So I'll select it with the selection tool and drag a duplicate away using the Alt or Option key. If I add the Shift key, it's going to move in a perfectly vertical direction. Now I'll press Ctrl D, that would be Command D on the Mac, a few more times till I get five little boxes. For the color scheme, I'm going to the color themes option. So I'm choosing window and then color themes. I'm looking currently at the explore area and the most popular color schemes. And I'm just going to scroll down to find the one I want, which is Cause Joker. I'll click it and choose Add to Swatches and that'll be added to my Swatches panel. So here it is in the swatches panel. I want to set each of those swatches up as a global swatch. So I'll double the stake. I want to set each of these colors up as a global swatch. So I'll double click each in turn and just set them to global. This is going to give me some additional ability to recolor these later on. Now I'm going to use these colors for these shapes. So I now have a handy set of color pickers. You can create any shape for the object that you're going to create and fill with the design. I'm going to use the pencil tool. I'm going to create a sort of organic shape, but I don't want it to have lots of ins and outs. It's just going to be a sort of fluid shape. And I'm going to hover back over the starting point till I see that little O next to the pencil tool so that Illustrator will join this shape up. Now, if you want to have a look at my pencil settings, I'll double click on the pencil tool. I have it set to smooth. And the other important thing is to close paths when the ends are within 20 pixels. It doesn't have to be 20 pixels, but you want it close enough that you can close the ends up. The other settings, not really highly relevant at this stage. I'll click OK. I'm going to the selection tool. I'm going to select over my shape and I'm going to fill it with one of my colors. So I'll go to the eyedropper tool and just click on one of the colors to use. We're going to continue to use that eyedropper tool to select colors that makes life really easy. So again, with the shape selected, I'm going to apply my gradient mesh and it has a toolbar position all to itself over here. So I'm just going to click on gradient mesh. That makes the mesh tool active, but right now nothing's really happened. What I can do is to just click where I want an element to appear. So if I click at this point, I'm going to get a vertical and a horizontal line dividing the shape up. And there's a node or anchor point in the middle here. And there's one at every end of the lines. And you can use those to color the object. So let's just go and select this one here. I'm doing that with the direct selection tool. That's really important. Then I'm going to the eyedropper tool to target it and then I'll click on one of these colors. And what's happening with the gradient mesh tool is it's adding a color point at this point and then just sort of blending the colors into the shape. So let's go back to the gradient mesh tool because we want some more points here. I'm going to add a few more points to my shape. Now they're using this color that I already had selected, but they don't have to and I can change those at any time. 
So I'm going to the direct selection tool. I'm going to select on one point and then I'll hold the shift key as I select other points. Now they can be inside the shape and they can also be along the outside here. And when I have them selected, I'll go to the eyedropper and click on a color to use for those points. Now there are a few tools that you can use to speed things up and one of them is the lasso tool because the lasso tool allows you to select over discrete points. So I've selected all these points along the outside. The eyedropper tool you can get to by pressing its shortcut letter which is I. Obviously the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, its letter is A and the lasso tool is Q. If you know those, things are going to be a lot quicker for you to work with these shapes. I'm going to the lasso tool. I'm going to lasso some of these points. Now, if I sort of weave in and out, I can lasso individual points, but leave some of the others unlassoed, if you like. Press the letter I to go back to the eyedropper tool and just click on the eyedropper tool to sample those colors. Something's gone badly wrong up the top here. So let me just fix that. You can continue to use the mesh tool to add additional mesh points with interesting colors at their intersection. You can also use the direct selection tool to edit any of these points because they're just curved lines. So you can drag them around and place them wherever you want them to be. So they don't have to be in the position that they started in. And each one of these has got a handle that you can use to adjust it. One of the reasons why I used global colors for this object was it was going to make things easier to recolor. I have a bit of a problem with this green color. So I'm going to the swatches panel here. I'll double click on the green color. I'm going to change its color. And I can do that by just adjusting these color lines here. If I turn preview on, I can see the effect that that's having in my illustration as I drag to change the colors. You'll see that it's also changing the color of this swatch here too. When you're satisfied with your new color, you can click OK. It's also possible to recolor these shapes by selecting over the shape and use the recolor artwork tool. It's located the colors that I have in use in this image. So I can go to the edit tool here, lock down my colors and just rotate them around. So this is going to give me a variation on the color scheme that I have used. Now you don't have to lock your colors down. If you don't want to, you can unlock them and then take individual colors into different positions, which will allow you some sort of fine tuning of the effect. If you find something that you like, click OK, but just know that you're going to lose your original colors if you do that. I'm just going to click cancel for this one because there's another option that you can use as well. With the object selected, you can choose edit and then edit colors and then choose adjust color balance. I'm going to select RGB and make sure I have preview turned on. Here I can make changes to the overall color of the image. And so what I'm looking at is these sort of yellow areas and I'm not liking those. Well, blue is the opposite to yellow. So if I drag in a sort of negative direction towards the word blue, I'm going to add yellow to the image. But if I drag away, I'm going to add blue to the image. And the opposite of green is magenta. So I go to the right to add green and to the left to add magenta. I'm actually liking the slight green here and red and cyan are opposites. Go towards the right to add red, go towards the left to add cyan. And so you can sort of fine tune the effect that you're getting by just dragging on these sliders. And this of course is the adjust colors option. And what it's doing is adjusting the colors in the entire image. It can be attractive to add an inner glow to these shapes before you finish. So I'm going to select over the shape and choose effect and then stylize. I'm going to choose inner glow. 
Now the default in a glow is a screen so it's going to add a sort of lightning around the edge. Well if you don't want that to be the case you can set it to multiply and go and grab a darker color. So I'm going to grab a sort of purple color for my glow effect and then I can increase the opacity of it and I can increase the blur amount and that's just going to add this sort of darkening effect around the edge. I think in actual fact a lower opacity would work better but a slightly bigger blur. I'll click OK. To finish off I'll place my shape on a dark background. I'll center it over the artboard and take this rectangle that is the size of my artboard underneath everything else. Now I can lock it down, that would make sense if I wanted to continue to work on this object because it means that then the background is not selectable. I hope that you've enjoyed learning this process for creating these multicolored shapes in Illustrator. If you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time my name's Helen Bradley, thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.